I will say upfront, I am admittedly a big fan of General Powell, so perhaps I'm biased. To me, this picture of his headstone in Arlington can teach us more about leadership than every book, training, and speaker out there put together. There's no monument, there's no mausoleum, no accolades, no statues. It offers nothing more about his life than the information that every other headstone bears. It is a simple grave of a soldier in a field of graves of other soldiers. Every marker is equal, so that every life loss will be mourned equally. Thank you, General Powell. Your last lesson on leadership might have been your greatest of all. What did you learn from leadership by looking at this picture? Please tell me, pinpoint exactly what you learned from this picture, because I don't see anything. It's a headstone, you can be inspired by it or whatever. It did not actually teach you anything. When people think of social media cringe, they immediately think of TikTok. I think of LinkedIn. Now I know a lot of you youngsters don't even know what LinkedIn is. It is a business networking platform. Coincidentally, it probably has the same demographic of old boomers. Now, this is our chance to get back at them, right? What I don't understand about LinkedIn is that it is the same type of post that goes viral every single time. It's as if people have memory issues on LinkedIn because they keep upvoting the same exact message every single time. At least during TikTok, they do creative stuff and creative challenges, even if I cringe at it anyways. LinkedIn is a special type of disease that even all the virtual signalers on Twitter can't compete with them. Let's take a look. If you interact with brands regularly on social media, there's a 100% chance that at some point, a social media manager has replied to you on their day off, during meals with their families, on vacation, while being sick with any number of times when they really shouldn't be working. Be kind. Dude, shut the- God, I, I, Don't work then. My Uber driver is a data-driven genius. She creates a table and logs the time to pick up, bonus from Uber, fare by the hour of each ride. This way she can learn when she can have the highest ROI to offer rides. It's not as cool as using an API to pull those data from Uber and I doubt Uber would let drivers know how the dynamic pricing algorithm works. But this simple manual form helps her to gain a high level understanding of the pattern. Simple analysis can drive huge insights. If you didn't know where to start in data science, just pick up a question you are interested in. Start with simple measurement and see if you can observe some patterns, even if you use Excel or pen and paper. Data science is everywhere. How are you using it to optimize your life? I write more about data science and careers on my website. Here's a picture of the thing. Yeah, it is smart to do, but is this story actually true? Let's find out. Click on her profile. 168,000 followers. So you're just telling me that someone who's trying to go viral on LinkedIn just happens to have this happen? Let's take a look at the post. It's all stuff just trying to farm followers and go up and up and up. It's not actually about the story. Just remember that whenever you're reading everything on LinkedIn. I left the office at 1 p.m. In the morning, I told my team I'd be leaving early. I didn't say I had a client meeting or a doctor's appointment. I told them the truth. I was going to watch my daughter receive an award at her school assembly. Why? because I'm human. I'm not trying to impress people how hard I work. I prefer to build an open and transparent culture. As a leader, it starts with me. No one should hide their personal life at work or apologize for it. Do you need to go pick up your kids from school? Go for it. Need to be home to accept a delivery of your new couch? Awesome, text me a picture. We're all human, let's be real about our lives as long as we get the work done, deliver what we say, keep growing our clients' businesses. Let's be authentic with each other on the journey. What do you think? Hashtag leadership, hashtag authenticity, hashtag LinkedIn. This is the least authentic thing I've ever read. No crap, people are humans. And if you have to do something, like just go do it. Now let's do the truthfulness check. His bio says, here to write, if it goes viral, it's not because of me, it's because it's true. No, it's because you're making up nonsense stories every single time. Read everything this guy's posted. He's literally just trying to go viral every single time. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of this guy in the future. I read a stat on LinkedIn today that remote workers are healthier and exercise on average an extra 30 minutes per day. Pick on the left is me shortly before finishing a job where I had a three hour round commute. Pick on the right is me, today, after three years of remote working. I get to exercise most days, make a healthy breakfast and lunch each day, and don't have the stress of the commute. Hashtag museum of work, remote working, future of work. So yeah, before and after pictures, you could already tell one is where he got a spray tan, the other one is before the spray tan. One uses a better quality camera or has better lighting, the other one uses a worse camera and has worse lighting. No surprise that one looks better than the other. Now, I'd be inclined to believe that this is an actual post, but Judging by his number of LinkedIn followers, he just tries to make posts that goes viral. Unfortunately for him, LinkedIn is probably the most cringiest platform to try to go viral on. 
your job title is temporary. How you treat others, that is what will be remembered. All right, Boomer, like, holy cow. No crap, your job title is temporary. No crap that people will remember how you treated them. This isn't something new or inspiring. Discussing mental health at work with Prince Harry. Employees are not resources to manage. They're humans to value. Bad managers only care about your results. Good managers care about your well-being. Great managers care more about your well-being than your results. We do our best work when our leaders put people above performance. Why is the same thing repeated every single time and all this stuff all goes viral? It just doesn't make any sense at all. Don't people see the same garbage every single day? It's always that feel-goody vibe and things that just matter and people already know about, but also like don't matter at the same time. Also, I wish this guy would hire me because I would make sure my well-being is at the highest while my performance is at the lowest and see if he'd fire me. Back in 2013, I took $300 and bought three shares of Tesla. I was scared out of my mind, but I did it anyways. I was working on Wall Street, watching the 1% pay mutual fund fees that equaled my annual salary. Do you think being around a people who didn't look like me while also having way more money than me made me uncomfortable? Well, it did. The only black girl as a first year analyst on Wall Street who knew nothing about investing, even with a degree in finance. Well, then how did you get the job in the first place? Never mind. My employer performance reviews told it all. I felt small, but I saw what was possible, and that kept me going. Now, I've never been afraid to start, so I took my $300 and went to work. Years later, people are surprised I know what I know, and every day I get stronger. Why did billionaires get to have all the fun? This Howard girl from Philly can play the game too. That's why I created Empify. Empower plus modify so that everyone of all ages could understand. Day one of 2022, I'm finally getting around to opening my second brokerage account just for dividends. I've been slacking. I'm pushing for 10,000 a month in dividends and I'm not stopping till I get there. If you're looking to learn, here's my free investment class for beginners. Also, you can download our five ways to start investing with less than $100 free guide if you're looking to start small like I did. And again, I'd be inclined to relate more with the author if it wasn't someone who's just trying to go viral on LinkedIn. Well, we look at her account, 32,000 followers, saying the same exact sob story every single time. It's disingenuous because you're running like a teach about investing course or whatever you want to do, which are notorious for scamming people. All right, clicking on the site right away, you could immediately tell this is one of those scam sites where they just uh, tried to rip you off as much as possible. Uh, because these are all sales funnels. In case you guys didn't know, uh, I'm gonna link you guys a video to CoffeeZilla. He covers a lot of this stuff. All these are just sales funnels, and it looks like any other generic get-rich-quick scheme site. Pretty much everything, any investment course that you have to pay for can teach you can be easily found online already. And if someone did have a secret way of making money, they're not going to tell you. A team member submitted her resignation. She was joining a multi-billion dollar social media company. It was rough. One of the smartest people I know. Came in with almost no experience. Earned three promotions in two years. I did not want to lose her. So we had an honest conversation. Turns out she felt she'd learn everything there was to know and she wasn't as excited as she used to be. She wanted a change. And there was a bright, shiny opportunity she'd been waiting for. So I thanked her for being honest with me and offered her something different. We just onboarded a 1 billion ARR brand and she could be in charge of that account. And in the spirit of honesty, I told her it would be the most challenging thing she ever did. So she decided to stay and had the roughest time of her career, adjusting to the demands of a huge client shouldering more responsibility than ever before, being accountable for a huge piece of revenue. It was a nightmare. A few months later, she came up to me. This has been the most difficult thing I've ever done, she told me, and I absolutely love it. And I told her how happy I am she decided to stay. But the biggest lesson here was, in addition to money, people want purpose, growth, challenges. And they have every right to want that kind of fulfillment. The hard truth? If you don't give that to them, someone else will. Wow, I for one am so inspired by the great leadership of this person. What an inspiration. Thank you, LinkedIn poster. I could not have lived my life without knowing the story. Fun fact, I guarantee if someone offers her double the money, she'd be leaving anyways. You know, when I look at his profile, it seems like he actually is someone who isn't trying to just be go viral on LinkedIn. But then when I look at his activity, he does these types of posts like once a month, it seems. He stopped recently, but you know, I still consider that a guilty. Some people are going to look at this picture and say, that is absolutely inappropriate for LinkedIn. And that's okay, I wanted to share this picture on LinkedIn because I noticed that people on here, including myself, 
are rarely ever given permission to show their authentic selves on this platform. We share the carefully edited images that we think our fellow professionals expect to see, dressed in a suit and ties, etc. No, we don't. This is LinkedIn. We rarely share pictures at all. We use language that conflicts with our native tongue just to fit the professional mold. But bruh, all that gets mad exhausting, lol. The fact is, I'm still an associate director of admissions in a do-rag and a hoodie standing on my block. The fact is, I'm still a 4.0 doctoral student whether I'm using language that you're used to people using on LinkedIn, or if I'm talking to y'all like how I be talking to my peoples, feel me? So, in conclusion, if you happen to catch me dressed like this, just know that all the accolades, knowledge, degrees, and achievements that would grant me access to the professional world are still there. Authentic is a new professional. Friendly reminder, you're a whole human being, even on LinkedIn. It should be okay to be yourself, your authentic self. All right, I'm gonna be a authentic person on YouTube. Uh, no one cares. Just picture this hypothetical situation where you walk outside tomorrow morning and you add $1 million to your bank account. No one's gonna care either. I get that a lot of the LinkedIn stuff is seeing something that is against the mold, but everyone wears casual outfits. Just because it's a do-rag versus a wife beater doesn't make it any different at all. I want to be honest for a second. We need to acknowledge it's perfectly okay to talk about failures, talk about mental health, career breaks, career transitions, mentorship, taking work risks, having fun at work. Let's start normalizing things that make us grow. Agree? I don't know about you guys, but it's always been fine to talk about this. I don't know where you've been working, but most corporate jobs, which I'm guessing this person is in, aren't that serious. No one actually cares that much. Everyone's there just wage slaving and trying to get onto the next day. So stuff like this, people talk about it all the time. Maybe it's just me, but all this sentimental garbage, which is very obvious that is okay to do already, makes me want to throw up that much harder.